It was, it was the apostle Paul that began to reveal the mystery of the church. Uh, now, God knew what was going to take place. But in reality, let me tell you this. If the Jews had accepted... If the Jews had accepted and received the king and the kingdom. Now we would still be a part of it, but we would not have been grafted in as it were. Yeah. But can you imagine, you know, of course we think it, it would have been great, but all things work together for good. But if the Jews had accepted the king and the kingdom that he brought to them, because literally he came unto his own and brought to them the kingdom of God. And had they accepted it, we would not have been grafted in. The kingdom would have went right on going. The Jewish nation would have accepted and received their king that was prophesied, that they were told was coming, that they were told was going to bring and establish a new covenant with greater and more precious promises. They were told all of this. But because they were so stubborn and stiff-necked and he didn't come the way they thought he should come, they could not receive him. But had they received the king and the kingdom message that he brought... His kingdom would have begun to be established from that point on. And we would have probably come right on up to today. And we would be a part of it just like we are. But it turned out he knew, of course, in his mind what would happen. They would reject him. They would not receive him. We were grafted in. And then after most all of the apostles were killed, the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus brought that Jesus preached and that Jesus said this gospel of the church will be preached to all the world and then shall the end come. No. He said this gospel of the kingdom. He didn't talk about the church. This gospel of the kingdom, this new way of life. See, what was he bringing to the Jews? Because, again, they were already his people. He was bringing them a new way of life. He was bringing them freedom and liberty to walk into what he was about to do for them on their behalf where no longer would they have to live it and accomplish it on their own. No longer would it be through the rituals and the traditions and the shedding of blood and all the ceremonies and, and all of it. It would no longer be through that. It would be through the shedding of his blood. And he's presenting to them a new kingdom that they would begin to live by and live through. Wow. Amen. And now we, the church, it went the way it went. Now we, the church, have been grafted in. Amen. We are his people. Yes. Now what he presents to us is something greater than the vehicle. It's the realm in which we can live. It's sometimes we wonder how how does this happen? Because it's a spirit realm. How do we live? I will give you peace that passes understanding. See, that's not the natural mind. That's, that's not the natural mind. In the midst of whatever you may be going through, and we haven't even got to Esther yet, but in that realm right there, that the whole nation is about to be annihilated. 
And she's called for such a time as this. For them to be saved. For their lives to be spared. A peace that passes understanding. It's a realm that you have to live in that goes beyond the carnal mind. It's only accomplished through the renewed mind by the Word. We left here. We left here on the 15th of March, 2020. Now I'm just going to share one little story with you. There's all kinds I can share. Both good and bad, but just this one little story. We left here on the 15th of March, 2020. On the 18th of April, 2020, we had our 12th grandbaby born to us. Oh, that's right, 11. 11 at that time. We've had 12 and 13 since. Uh, grandbaby number 11 was born to us about a month. A month and three days after we got home, our third daughter and her husband had precious little, beautiful little baby girl. And Papa, that's what I'm called, and that's Grammy. See, this Papa had four daughters, and it's hard to have four little princesses. So none of my daughters are what I would call a classical daddy's girl. Does anybody have a daddy's girl? I mean, one of your daughters is really daddy's girl? Nobody? Yeah. It's, it's much easier to have a daddy's girl, daddy's little princess, when you just have one daughter. Or, or maybe two. But if you have four daddy's girls, you're broke. You have no pesos ever. So I, I never had what I would... This is going to be Papa's girl. I already, I already had some other granddaughters, but this one was going to be Papa's girl. This little gal is going to get whatever she wants. Oh. Five days after she was born, she went to heaven. Whoa. Unexplained, somewhat of a mystery. We, there were some physical circumstances that was taking place while she was being born. There were mistakes made at the hospital. There were mistakes made by the doctor. And five days after my precious little queen was born, she went to heaven. That's when you have to have a renewed mind. That's when you have to know what it is to have a peace that passes understanding. And the morning of the day that we said goodbye to her, about 5 o'clock in the morning, that next day, I made arrangements for the funeral home to pick her up from the hospital, take her to the funeral home so I could hold her. Because it just wasn't right. This, this isn't right. My, my little granddaughter, five days, and she's gone to heaven. I've got to know I've done everything I can do. And I went to that funeral home and they put her in a little dress and put her in a basket. And I was able to go into a room all by myself, just me and Quinn. And Pastor, I took her out of that basket in that little dress. And I held her for an hour. And I prayed. And I took authority over death. I cursed and came against the spirit of death. And I spoke the life to her. 
I'd done everything I knew to do for an hour and a half. And I went there totally expecting I'm going to bring my granddaughter home. And I went there and done everything I knew to do as a believer. And I went home without her. Now that is when you have to have peace that passes understanding. And probably every one of you have a story that you can tell me right along the same line. I just want to tell you that doesn't come with the old way that we've done things and the old way that we've looked at things and the old way that we've interpreted Scripture. That doesn't come when you try to put new wine in an old wineskin. That kind of thing, the kingdom only comes. And if I, if, if I had time, I'd love to go back and preach new wine and old wineskins. Because that's what we've done in the church for way too long. We've tried to put new wine in old wineskins. And it just doesn't work. You can't, get, you can't get the revelation, the truth of the New Testament, which is new wine, and put it in old wineskins. That's one reason the message of grace and truth has been fought so hard and so hard for people to receive because they're trying to put this new wine in old wineskins. And it doesn't work. It's a whole new mindset. If you get into new wine, you can't put it in old wineskins. You've got to become a new wineskin because the old mindset doesn't work anymore. Amen. Amen. You can't put the law in an old wineskin because it will just burst all yeah, over the yeah, place. Yeah. This kind of kingdom realm doesn't come in old wineskin. you got to be willing to be a new wineskin that is pliable and flexible for the truth and the revelation of God's word for this hour in order to come into you and then you begin to walk it out. You've got to be a new wineskin. Amen. Amen. What a tremendous revelation of the old wineskin and new wine and how desperately the church needs it today because unless we become a new wineskin, we will do ourselves no good and we will do no one else any good because every bit of truth we receive will just be spilled out as we burst. Amen. And it profits no one. So this kingdom realm, a new mindset is the only way you can have peace that passes understanding. It's the only way you can live in a realm that is free. That is free. That is free. This is a very simple thing, but it's a, it's a very a plain thing that everybody deals with, and, and that is fear. Fear. You can't live... Uh, well, we, we say it like this back home. Uh, faith, faith and fear... That's right. Don't go together. You cannot mix faith and fear. Do you know how much of the church lives with a mixture of faith and fear at the same time? And it does not work. You can't have fear and faith at the same time. But we've lived that way. The realm of the kingdom is that we live above and beyond fear. I will keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Yes. Whose mind is Focus fixed on you. me. Yes. Whose mind is meditating my word. Yes. Whose, whose, whose mind is taking my word. And like the cow, in America we say the cow chews their cud. You know what that is in the Philippines? Uh, how, how, would, how would I express that? Yeah. 
They just, they just keep chewing it and keep chewing it and keep chewing it. You just, you just get the word and you put the word in you and you put the word in you and you meditate that word and you meditate that word. Sometimes you may take one verse and just meditate that thing for two or three days. That's the only way you get into the kingdom is by taking his word and receiving it and meditating upon it 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 and and saying, Holy Spirit, reveal it unto me. Show it unto me. I never debate scripture with anybody. The reason I don't debate scripture with anybody is because everything I have received, 95% of everything I have received that I preach and that I teach has come by revelation. Amen. Not by debating the scripture. So therefore, I don't debate what I believe with somebody because if they don't get it by revelation, they're not going to get it. Amen. That's why it's important that we preach and minister under the anointing of the Holy Spirit yes. and the Spirit bringing us revelation and then revealing it, that same Spirit revealing it and illuminating it to those we're preaching to. Amen. Amen. The kingdom comes without observation because it's a realm that we live in. Peace that passes understanding. I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, is fixed on me. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not walk in unbelief. The the King James, most translations says, that I might not sin against you. I believe the sin that we sin against God is unbelief. Most people categorize sin as the things we do. This is a little called for such a time as this. Let me... Let me get going just a little bit with this portion of it. And then we'll stop for lunch. Remember now, these were already his people. Everybody familiar with the story of Esther? Let me see your hand. Are you familiar with Esther? Yes. The story of Esther. Let me... I'll try and give you some things like a one, two, three, four, and you can write these down, one, two. Things that God done. Things that God done concerning this event. And the reason I spent so much time and really could spend more time differentiating between the kingdom and the church is because the theme here is we've been called to the kingdom. For such a time as this. See, even in the Old Testament. It's not only in the New Testament did Jesus preach the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Matter of fact, let me encourage you pastors. I heard Miles Monroe. I can't take credit for this. I heard Miles Monroe say this many years ago. And he endeavored to do this in his ministry. I heard him say, if preachers would spend more time preaching the gospel of the kingdom rather than the letters and the epistles, now we can preach from the letters and the epistles. And they're good for us. And we learn from them. But he said, most preachers spend more time preaching the epistles and the letters Versus the red words. Spoken words. Spoken words. Huh? How many know the, the red? You got the red letter editions, right? Yeah. The red letters are what Jesus said. Yes. Most preachers spend 90%, 95% of their time preaching from the epistles and the letters versus what Jesus said. Miles Monroe said we'd be a a whole lot better off if we'd start doing more preaching about what Jesus said versus the epistles, the letters, or today we can say somebody else's book. (laughs) You don't need to preach from somebody else's book. 
Preach from the book. Preach from the book. Now, will it hurt you to read someone's book? Not at all. Well, it depends on whose book it is. <laughs> there are some books I would not recommend. But you certainly can become more educated and enlightened by reading some books, some good books that will bring enlightenment to you. But I know some guys, all they do is preach from somebody else's book. I had a pastor friend in the, in the States. Doesn't live too far from me. Known him for years. He told me, and it's been probably 30 years ago now, he was a real Kenneth Copeland fan. And for years in his church, he preached Kenneth Copeland. from Kenneth Copeland's notes. Now, I, I have a whole notebook of Kenneth Copeland's outlines and notes. I also have another book of notes and outlines from E.W. Kenyon. And if you compare E.W. Kenyon's notes with Kenneth Copeland's notes, that's about all Kenneth Copeland preached <laughs> was E.W. Kenyon. So we've all done it. But this friend of mine, all he preached from was Kenneth Copeland's notes. I remember where I was sitting. We, I was at a minister's breakfast with him on a Thursday morning at the Ramada Inn Hotel out in Eureka, Missouri. And he said, guys, i got to tell you something. i got to stop doing this. We're, we're all like, okay. What is this you need to stop doing? He said, I just decided yesterday i got to stop preaching from Kiddus Copeland's notes. Because <laughs> yesterday, well, or not yesterday, but Sunday, last Sunday, when I was preaching from his notes, I forgot to replace his name with mine. <laughs> And he's preaching along. He said, now, now you might say, Brother Copeland. And then he realized he forgot to get that transpose in there. And he said, I come to the conclusion, my Lord, I've got to get in this thing for myself. I've got to get some revelation from myself. I can't keep preaching Kenneth Copeland's notes. Now, he had a decent-sized church. It was working somewhat. But you know what? There's a day Kenneth Copeland's notes are going to run out. He said, I, I had to stop. I put them all away. i got to do my own notes. i got to get a message from God. i got to hear from God. Sometimes, leaders, we get so busy working for God, working for God, we don't spend enough time with God to hear from God. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. So, the difference between kingdom and church. And Esther was called for such a time as this. And that's what we're doing. We're called for such a time as this. That's why I spent some time differentiating between the kingdom and the church. Because as Esther was called for such a time, we are called for such a time as this. I believe we're on the threshold of the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen. I know there's some of the church. I know there's a, a fraction of the church out there that give the devil all the glory and all the power and the church is going to be defeated, busted, rusted, and disgusted when Jesus comes back. And most everybody's going to hell anyhow. <laughs> Did I just say I believe we've made it too easy for people to go to hell for way too long? I believe there's a whole lot more people going to go to heaven than bust the gates of hell. We were talking to somebody not long ago. Pastor George, they just, it just irritated them that somebody on their deathbed would be able to accept Jesus and get the same reward they would get living for them all their life 
this is a Christian now, been a Christian for years, and just could not grasp that somebody on their deathbed could accept Jesus and get the same eternal reward. Now, they may not get the same reward for works as this guy, but they're going to get the same eternal reward accepting Jesus in the 11th hour. And this Christian for years had so much difficulty accepting and receiving that because after all, Somebody ought to pay for everything he done all those years. Well, somebody did pay for everything he done all those years. His name is Jesus. Amen. But this is the mentality of church versus kingdom. The mentality of the church is, how can somebody live for the devil all their life and accept Jesus on their deathbed and then get the same <laughs> eternal reward? How can that be? And that just really irritates me. That's the mentality of the church. Yes. That's not the mentality of the kingdom. Yes. Yes. I believe there's a whole lot of people. How about, how about people that we've known and people that I know that have referred to relatives and so forth that didn't really live for God and they died and they just assumed they were lost. No possibility that Jesus came to them on their deathbed and they accepted Jesus. Just because they lived the way they lived all their life and assumed they had not accepted Jesus when they went in the hospital and got sick or, or walking down the street and fell over with a heart attack, they just assumed they never accepted Jesus, so they just determined they're separated from God for eternity. You know what? I, I think my God is bigger than that. That's right. Only God knows. And how about the fact that at the very last moment of their life, the Spirit of God moved upon them and brought the light, the light of the salvation of Jesus Christ into their heart, and they said, Yes, Lord, I receive you. On their deathbed. So I'm persuaded to believe there's going to be a whole lot more people in heaven than we ever thought there was going to be. And probably some that we thought would be there that may not be. We've been called for such a time as this. Esther was called for such a time as this. That's why we must understand the difference between the kingdom and the church. Because even in the Old Testament, she was called unto the what? The church? No. She was called unto the kingdom. I got to thank the Holy Spirit because he brought back to me right then where I was 15 minutes ago. Not only in the ministry of Jesus was the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom preached, but all through the Old Testament, that's all that's talked about, is the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. That's why when Jesus came, they were already... Uh, able to relate to kingdom. Because that's all they knew. It was kingdom. The Old Testament is all kingdoms. They understood the king. They understood kingdoms. They understood king rule. They understood kingdom authority. Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Esther was called unto the kingdom for such a time as this. We've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. That's why the importance, yeah. the importance of understanding the difference between the kingdom and the church. Now, let me, let me give you a second closing before we go to lunch. Before, I mentioned this yesterday, and I want to say this again, then we'll, we'll break for lunch. God began speaking to me as I was looking at Esther and going over it again, he, he began speaking to me that before before Esther was summoned to the kingdom. Now write that word down, before. Before she was summoned to the kingdom. Before she was called queen. Before she walked boldly into the king's 
throne room. All of these befores, God was making room for her to be put into position to fulfill her holy purpose. Before. Before she was summoned to the kingdom. Before she was called queen. How many want to be in this place before? You know, we, 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 we want to already be there. But before she was summoned, before she was queen, before she boldly walked into the king's throne room, God was making room for her. That's why I emphasized in the very beginning of this today, don't count your today as insignificant. Why is that? Because today may be your before. Amen. That's why I said earlier, and I told you we, we come back to some of, the, some of these things that I said earlier. Now we'll, we'll reattach them and put them together even more. That's why I mentioned the fact of uh, look every day. Take every day. Get up every day and say, God, I, I'm going to see what you have for me today. Because tomorrow is not more significant than today. And today is not more than tomorrow. But today could be your before. Yes. Before she was called to the kingdom. Before she was called queen. Before she walked into the king's throne. Before God had already made room for her. Amen. Today is significant, Pastor, because today may be your before. Amen. Today may be the day God is making room for you for what you may do tomorrow. Amen. Or it may be next week. It may be a month or two or a year or two from now, but today may be your before. Yeah. You just don't know. That's why I have more intensely, I've always done this and, you know, believed it and, and not always spoke it internally or, or outward. I, I just know it. So by faith, I received it. But more recently, I've intensified uh, my confession on a daily basis. Now, I know it. I'm secure in it. I'm confident in it. I don't believe that things are going to fall apart if I don't do it, but more on an, an, an intensified basis, I'm declaring and decreeing every day, Thy kingdom come. Amen. Thy will be done in my life Amen. as it is in heaven. Amen. And through <coughs> my life as it is in heaven, so shall it be on this earth. Amen. Every day, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Every day, finances are coming to me today. Amen. Every day, seeds I have sown are going Amen. to begin to come forth in great harvest. Amen. Every day, my children and grandchildren, those that I love, are protected and covered and coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and walking greater in His glory for the kingdom. Every day, declaring those things because today might be my before. For what God wants me to do. And for what God wants you to do. Yes. Amen. We got to understand. Before. She rose up in great authority. God was already working. Behind the scenes. God made room for her. Before there was ever a need. For her. God what am I going to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? I feel so insignificant. Maybe it's because the need for you hasn't come up yet. Yeah. You know the greatest way to fill your churches? The easiest way to fill your churches? Supply the need of the people. It doesn't make any difference if it's a business or a church. If you can meet the need of someone, you will have that someone. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you fill a church? Make sure you can meet the needs of the people. 
you'll fill up a church. Will some of them be there just for the need meeting? Oh, yeah. But there's a lot of them you can bring into the kingdom. You meet somebody's need, you're priceless. God, how can you finance what you want me to do? He just may give you an idea that will be exactly what the millionaire down the road needs. And he gets it to you to get it to them. Guess what? Your ministry just got financed. Amen. Because if you can meet somebody's need, you can become priceless to them. The mind of the kingdom in you. The mind of Christ in you. God can give you one idea. God can give you one second. I believe Pastor George said this Sunday morning. God can give you one second of favor. And your ministry budget is met for the rest of the year. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. See, He'll make room for you. And when there is a need for you, God made room for her before there was ever a need for her. We don't see what God is doing in the background. We don't hear the conversations that are taking place in rooms we haven't even stepped into yet. We don't know of the divine favor God is pouring out on us when we feel insignificant and hidden. Pastors, have you ever felt insignificant and hidden? God, am I accomplishing anything? Am I doing anything? Am I helping anybody? But we don't know the divine favor God's pouring out on us when we feel insignificant and hidden. That's why I say for the kingdom, you are significant. Amen. You are significant. Let me close with this. A few years ago, I think it was in 22. See, we don't know the conversations taking place in rooms we haven't been in. Now, this is on a financial arena, but it's happened in other arenas as well. In 21 or 22, Pastor Sabata had a businessman. He was a builder. I had a builder call me one day. And he said, Bruce, I'm getting ready to build a custom house. And when I build that custom house, we sell it. I'm going to give your ministry 20% of the profit. I said, okay, that sounds good. And that's about the way I said it because I don't get excited. About the only time I get excited in life is when I'm preaching. <laughs> My wife can tell you that. Otherwise, I'm just just an even keel all the time. I mean, if somebody walked in here right now and handed me 40 million pesos, I'd say, well, praise God. Bless you, brother. I believe for a return harvest from this seed. And that'd be about it. That's just because that's me. So I said, that's wonderful. That, that'd be awesome. About a week later, he called me back. He said, Bruce, you know, I've been praying about that conversation we had a week ago. And, of course, normally you would think, oh, you don't want to do it now. <laughs> How many ever had those calls? <laughs> Pastor, just as soon as my money comes in, I'm going to give the church. Their money comes in, and the next call you get is, well, Pastor, I, I don't know what happened to all that money, but it's, it's gone. <laughs> He called me and said, Bruce, and I have been praying about that when we talked about a week ago? I said, yes. He said, well, I just felt the Lord spoke to me, and I decided when we sell that, I'm going to give 100% of the profit to you, to the ministry. Instead of 20%, I'm just going to give you all of it. That was good news, wasn't it? You know what the better news was? The better news was he actually done it. Because <laughs> remember, talk is cheap. People talk a big talk. You ever heard those those lottery winners? 
Have you ever heard of those lottery winners? Boy, if I win the lottery, is the Philippines having lotteries? But if I win the lottery, I'd give so much to God. <laughs> they're lying while they're talking. Usually it doesn't happen. So the better news was he actually done what he said. He built that house, sold it, gave us 100%, and it was a very good amount. See, we don't know the conversations. From the first call, the week went by to the second call, I didn't know about the conversations that was taking place in heaven. I didn't know God was orchestrating to reach down in that man's heart and begin to speak to him and say, you know what? 20% is not enough. Give it all. I didn't hear, I wouldn't privy to those conversations that was taking place in heaven where God was making room for me. Amen. Yes. But God's always making room for you. Amen. I didn't hear the conversation and the Holy Ghost spoke up to His Spirit and said, don't just do 20%, just give it all to Him. Amen. See, I didn't hear that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where kingdom trust comes in. Amen. We just got to trust God. God. Amen. Amen. We, we, sang the, we sang in the service yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, that was old. When you when you started out singing that, I was thinking, I haven't heard that in 40 years. <laughs> An old chorus we sang years ago. Trust and obey. Yeah. There is, oh, what profound words are the next few words. For there is no other way. To be happy, to have kingdom mentality in Jesus. Except to trust and obey. And obey. Who says the old songs aren't good anymore? <laughs> there are some of the old songs that aren't good anymore, that we don't need to sing. But there's a lot of the old songs we yes. need to start singing again, and that's one of them right there. Amen. Trust and obey. Amen. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus Hallelujah. but to trust and obey. Amen. You don't always hear those conversations the Lord's having about your circumstances. Amen. You just got to trust and obey. Amen. 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 We're going to break for lunch. We'll come back after lunch. And I, may, I may go a little farther into the second portion of this, but we're going to definitely talk about the, the ministry and the fellowship and good things that are coming up. And we're excited about it. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Okay.